All right, uh, this is Mab Made Mead, and I'm here with another video about some of the mistakes you might be making. This one specifically um, is about actually giving your yeast the proper nutrients they need to survive. So a mistake that a lot of people make is they just throw their yeast in the must and then hope for the best. And oftentimes those uh, yeast will struggle pretty greatly trying to um, survive without the proper food and oxygen. Um, I'll read my notes and uh, I'll put them in the description so you can watch it from there too. Read them. All of this stuff will be there. Uh, if you're a uh, visual like myself, it's nice to see things. So all yeast need nutrients to survive. Just like we need food, water, and oxygen, um, they ne need the basic things as well. So people make the mistake of feeding their yeast too late and oftentimes uh, you can't wait two months, three months, and then put in your um, nutrient because that will the yeast won't have time to actually use it and actually absorb it. Um, if you're adding your mead, your nutrients to the mead uh, weeks and weeks after fermentation has slowed down, those yeasts are not going to be able to come back. You have to give the yeast their food when the uh, fermentation first starts, which is generally the first two weeks of things. Um, there are lots of different schools of thought on this and a bunch of different methods and they all work and that's that's great you can absolutely add um yeast nutrient into the mead a couple weeks into the process but you have to pair it with how the actual yeast have uh, consumed the honey so the gravity if you're measuring your gravity and it's 1.12 and the next thing you know um your mead is at 1.06, you could still put some nutrient in. Uh, generally, you wanna, by the time that's about half, half of the gravity, that's a good time to put that in, or the latest time, I would say. After that, it becomes too late to start including in your, um, your nutrient, excuse me. So there's another method called the staggered nutrient schedule, which works well, um, and it provides the yeast uh, nutrient over time and it's something I've tried and it has has worked for me um, this happens within generally the first week to two weeks of the meads life the yeast life uh, the schedule that people will do is they'll take the bulk of all the nutrient they were gonna add initially so let's say you're gonna add um, 6.25 grams of go firm and then one gram of firm aid K so those are two products I use and I, I like quite a bit. They're, they're great yeast nutrients and yeast, new, uh, excuse me, energizer. So um, what they do is they take those and then over like three or four installments, meaning they just break them down in the, in the quarters, they'll add it uh, like on the second day of the meat's life. The first day they won't put any yeast nutrient. Second day, they'll start to add in um, uh, a quarter of that of their little mix that they have. So a quarter of it on the second day, quarter of it on the fourth day, and the sixth day, and then the eighth day. And so you have like a day in between, and when you're adding it, you have to be careful in a staggered schedule that you don't get a bunch of foaming because that can create some issues for the yeast as well. Um, you can hurt the yeast by adding in nutrients too late. Uh, they have, just like we have cells, they are basically a cell wall, they have cell walls, and those cell walls can be ruptured and they can die. Um, so I've done the staggered thing. I've also done, um, I've started to put my yeast uh, nutrient into the uh, actual hydration stage. And I think that works really well too. One video and podcast I heard a while back was about um, all about that, adding your yeast and how to give them nutrients. And it was really interesting because the people talked about how the yeast have cell walls. And so whenever they are hydrating, basically they're filling up those cell walls. They're dried, going from a dried portion to a hydrated portion. And whenever you give them the nutrient in the same time as they're hydrating, they're getting those nutrients and they're starting to combine them within the cell wall. And if they can get those nutrients inside of their cells before, then it makes them, it gives them an easier time to use and to survive and thrive on the, that um, actual, uh, those nutrients. So uh, it's something that I never thought about and I, I think that a lot of people don't think about quite a bit, but it's adding it in that portion works well. So 
Your yeast also, well, they'll use the nutrients that you give them in that way. And they also use the nutrients of the honey. The honey has some nutrients in it, but it doesn't have all of the basic things. It's like we can't live on um, honey. So there's no way they can live on honey. They need other various things. Some people will add things like, and I've done this before, raisins. Raisins work really well. They don't add a lot of flavor to the mead, which is good, but they provide the yeast with um, some nutrients to hold on to and to use when they are actually going through their fermentation process. Um, uh, I mentioned the Fermaid K and Go Firm, those are great. Raisins, um, just give your yeast whatever nutrient. It doesn't have to be those two, it doesn't have to be raisins, it can be another product, it can be something else, but the nutrient is super important. Next, the most important ingredient aside from, of course, your food is oxygen. Yeast use so much, so much oxygen, and it's really, really important that you provide them with every bit of oxygen that they can get. So this happens not in the later stages so much as it does in the, um, when you're making the must. So before the mead even becomes, has alcohol content in it, you can oxygenate your must. The way, uh, you have a couple options, you can stir, Whenever you're doing things, you can stir it up and stir pretty vigorously. That can be kind of hard to get a lot of oxygen in there. Um, you can shake it, and I do a lot of shaking with my carboy stuff. Uh, you can get a little fancier. You can buy a machine that in like some uh, oxygen pumps, O2, and basically just pump oxygen straight into the mead. That works well. Or you can do what I do, which is use a little aerator. And that aerator will allow for the oxygen in the mead to work well. Okay, so this is uh, my little machine that I have. It's just, it looks like a little bit of a robot, but basically on the end of here, this is called an oxygen stone. An oxygen stone is basically just a stone with little bitty holes all the way throughout it, and this tube will pump in oxygen into it and then put it into the mead. So this thing was about 20 to $25, I think, and it works really well to give your um, yeast, the oxygen they, they need, excuse me, because ultimately um, what they're doing is they're using the nutrients and then the oxygen is the first thing to go because oxygen will turn into carbon dioxide and they uh, use it quickly. So if you just give them a little bit of oxygen, they run through it real fast and then most of the time they die pretty quick. But if you give them a lot of oxygen, what you're doing is you're allowing them to live longer and go through the fermentation process quicker. Especially if the fermentation is really vigorous and really fast, um, they will use it so quickly. And so you have to watch that. You can add oxygen into your mead later on. You can put something like this. Um, make sure you do it kind of early on, the first two weeks, three weeks, something like that. Don't try to add in oxygen into a mead that's two or three months old, um, especially if you want the fermentation to stop. Um, let's see. The big thing with aerating things is you have to be patient. If you're stirring, you've got to do it for a long time. If, you got to, if you're shaking, you've got to do it for a long time. If you're doing this, it's got to sit for a long time. The oxygen is not something where you just, like a balloon, where you just kind of pump in real fast and all of a sudden it's all there. Generally, it takes a little while for the oxygen to, to happen. And so I'll leave this thing in and I'll put this, uh, this guy in the description. Um, I'll put this thing in for about you know, an hour, an hour and a half, and that will get the mead um, fairly oxygenated. But oxygen and nutrients are what your yeast need to survive. So don't make the mistake of not providing them with the stuff they need. Don't be afraid of spending the extra $10 it is to buy the yeast nutrient stuff. You're not gonna, you're gonna buy a big pack of it, and you're not gonna use it all um, really quick, so don't worry about that. But give them all the stuff they need, and they'll survive easier. And uh, you can try a couple different things, like just to synopsize what I've been saying. You can do the staggered nutrient schedule, which I will try and put a link to a staggered nutrient schedule in the description. Um, you could do what I do, and that's put it all into the hydration stage whenever they're happening. Put all of your um, yeast nutrient stuff in there, and they'll kind of absorb it in the cell wall. Or you can um, do a varied staggered one where you like start with about half your stuff and then after about a month you put in half more, something like that. But 
watching your gravity and watching the yeast as they use up this, the uh, nutrients is super important. So provide them with everything they need, they need and they'll serve you well. They're the powerhouse of everything. Um, and without yeast, you're not gonna make mead. So don't skip over the process. Um, if you have any more questions about yeast, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. I would love to answer as many as I can I, or with what information I can. If not, people, um, I will, people will either help me out or I'll get on and try to find more information. So thank you for watching. Ask questions. Um, look in the, the description for all of these notes and then also for all of these other things that I'm putting in. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.